Welcome to National Non-Fiction Writing Month. I'm Patricia Fripp, past president of the National Speakers Association. Once you have written your non-fiction book, you need to market it. And my recommendation is you speak to sell books and develop a following. There is no such thing as a free speech. You develop your skills, you add to your mailing list, and you have potential buyers. You can also give speeches before you've published your book, just getting people on the mail list to let them know. Your non-fiction book has a premise, a big idea. So does your speech. And once you have the big idea from your book that translates into your speech, you need to prove your idea or your premise or your point of view with your points of wisdom, your talking point. So for example, let us imagine you have 18 chapters in your book. Let's just say it's on leadership. You might want to walk out and tell a story from your book that when you have finished the story, you can easily transition into your premise, your welcome to 18 leadership techniques to transform your organization. Thank you for the opportunity to discuss the content in my book. There are 18 chapters, however, Fred suggested that you would be most interested in one, two, three, four. Then you take each chapter as a talking point, a chunk of content. So you might tell us what the chapter is about, the key idea. You might give an explanation of what that means, give an example from the book, and then what would you like the audience to do with that to improve their leadership or their condition, whatever your book is about. If it's a small group, you might say, before I continue, are there any specific questions about what you've heard about this chapter? You do that with the second and the third and fourth, however long you have. What you are not going to do is try and put 18 chapters in 35 minutes. Then let us imagine you've been through the four that you promised. Then you might say, we have 10 minutes. Would you like us to do Q&A or would you prefer to hear the fifth leadership technique? I promise you 99 times the audience will say, give us another technique because you are the expert and everybody knows I am at the mercy of the quality of the questions these idiots I work with are going to ask. Then, when you're nearly the end of your presentation, you're going to do a review. Your leadership skills will improve when you one, two, three, four, that's your review. If you have told about characters and individual stories, you might say, if you want to improve your leadership skills as Larry, Mary, and Susan did, take the steps that they did. I challenge you to call for action, call for action, call for action. Then you might say, we have 10 minutes. And, and it's appropriate to do some Q&A because a lot of people will ask, where can I get your book? If they don't ask, you say, I expected you to ask, now that you've heard some of the content from the book, where can you buy it? Well, lucky for you, uh, Gary did ask me to bring a few copies and they are on the back table. Now, you do not close on your sales presentation. So now you're going to say, I'll never forget the best leader who helped frame and mold my leadership skills. Then you tell a story to close or however, but you want to close on a high. What you might want to do is start your speech, perhaps telling a story early in your career when you were not a good leader. Then after the techniques, then you can say, once I learned to incorporate the leadership lessons from all the best bosses I've ever had, now I feel confident in leading others. 
then you can close on a story of life as it is now, now that you're a great leader. This is Patricia Fripp, past president of the National Speakers Association. If you want to learn how to speak more effectively, structuring, telling stories, check out FrippVT.com, as in virtual training. Good luck with promoting your book.